तो रिकनेक्ट करो फिनिश करो सर स्टार्ट करो प्लीज हेलो फ्रेंड्स अब हम वेलकम फ्रॉम ऑसीज ग्रुप दिस इज मालकम and today i have with me gaurang so sir, sir how are you today i'm fine malcolm how are you i'm fine thank you so much for being here sir so malcolm we are back with another live session and what do we have for this week well today we are going to take the first task of listening mm -hmm. which is called summarize spoken text so we are coming into the most important module That's of right. the entire pte test and we are starting with a very high value task That's right. The first task called summarize spoken text. So, Gaurang, what happens in this task exactly? If you could explain the viewers. Summarize spoken text, as the name suggests. Right. There, is, there will be something that will be spoken. It's right. a listening task. Right. So you listen to that. You listen to the audio that is being played in the headphones. Right. And then you have to write a summary. Right. Of what you heard. Right. the summary as i said has to be written it has to be typed into the space provided over there all right so in that sense it is slightly misleading when it says summarize spoken, spoken text, text because there is no text there is an audio right and you have to write the text all right and because there is writing as well as listening it's mm -hmm. a high value task because it contributes to both sides it's an integrated task right listening as well as writing writing that's right and also it is one of the most time consuming and stressful tasks that you can come across in the pte exam all right so gaurang roughly how many questions do we get in this task generally we would have two to three questions not right. more than that all right maximum three all right two to three questions and i believe there is also a time limit per question which we have an independent timer yes it's a 10 minute per question timeline right so that those 10 minutes include the audio that is being played as okay. well as the time given to write check and correct your summary all right and generally how much time should we take to write it down and how much to check it mainly what do you think well before i go to that let's talk about the audio the audio can be as short as 40 seconds all right and as long as 2 and 1/2 minutes that's right that is a really long audio and many times it's very lengthy as it's very lengthy and it can also be confusing because there will be an overload of information provided that's right right so depending on the length of the audio you also have to adjust the right. time you will be taken taking to write the summary that's right so if it's a shorter audio you can of course get started with the writing that much quicker that's right but at the same time you will have to take more notes because you have to write that same length of summary right if it's a longer audio mm. you can take down maybe a couple of points fewer right because you will have that much more information so you can be selective about the information and then you have to write the summary that's right but ideally after the audio finishes you should take somewhere around 3 minutes maybe to write your summary mm. that will leave you 3 to 4 minutes to check check and recorrect right and since you are talking about obviously it's an integrated task of listening and writing and pt also has a word limit which mm -hmm. we should follow in this task yes so that limit is 50, 50 to 70 words 70 only words so obviously if we don't follow this word limit even if it's one word less or more obviously it's going to result in a yes, penalty yes 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 so you should not have 49 words and you should not have 71 words so immediately there's a penalty of one point yes. i think writing exactly 50 is fine writing exactly 70 is fine, fine but do not exceed or go less than that limit so is there any like a recommended word limit doesn't make any difference or generally it doesn't make much difference go above 50 <laughs> as long as you are doing that that is fine there's nothing like you should write 55 or 65 or anything right. like that as i said it will depend on the length of the audio right if there's an overload of information to get your summary accurate you can push to maybe 65 67 words right and very specifically pt has written in the instruction that your score will depend on the quality of your writing mm -hmm. and on the key points which you selected from the audio yes so again now key points which means content plays a very vital role for your listening score yes the relevancy of the writing is going to be a key factor mm, right you have to your summary has to accurately reflect what was spoken in the audio right so we have a question i believe right tanu welcome to aussie's group and thanks for asking the question hope you're doing well 
Well, the question Tanu is asking is that is PT listening difficult as compared to IELTS? So, so uh, what is your take on that? Uh, that's a tricky question uh, because IELTS listening is more of multiple choice. Mm. Here you do have a couple of questions that are trickier than that. Particularly this particular question, summarize spoken text yes. and the last one right from dictation. Yes. These are two questions that are challenging compared to IELTS. At the same time, because IELTS has got uh, simpler yes, questions, format, structure, format yes, the structure right. is simpler. So it is easier sometimes mm. to get a perfect 90 in IELTS yes. than it might be in PT. PTE. That's right. At the same time, because PTE is computer scored mm. and because we know the methods, we know the patterns that can be followed. Right you can score better in PTE. That's right. So once you understand the structure, the pattern and the formats, I mean, there are eight question types in the listening module. So once you understand the scoring and how it works, it believe me, Tanu, I mean, believe us, it becomes very easy to get the required score in PT compared to yes. IELTS also. But even IELTS has its own like pros and cons. But these days, as you might be aware, even IELTS has come up with a computerized test. Yes. So even it becomes very similar to PT also in a way because you're typing everything. Yes. The online version of IELTS, I believe, I haven't as yet had the chance to study it or to assess it, but I believe it should provide stiff competition to PTE. That's right. All right. Uh, we cannot read the name because it seems to be in Bangla. Bangladesh. Yes. But what we can see is we have another question. Thank you for asking the question. We Unfortunately, we cannot. Mamoon, I think. I'm I think sure. it's Mamoon. Mamoon. Yes. So thank you, Mamoon. I hope I got your name correct. You have asked, should it be a complex or a compound sentence? What do you think, Malcolm? So, first thing, sir, that you don't have to write the summary in a single statement or in a single sentence. And writing the summary has to be a single sentence. Here, it should not be a single sentence summary. So, first thing is that you need to write multiple sentences. Now, coming to the question that whether should it be or should it include compound or complex phrases? So it should, be a, it should be a sort of a combination. It's not like if you write, write many complex phrases, your score is going to shoot up. No, it's not like that. But yes, one or two phrases will definitely help your score. Also, remember this. If you are not very comfortable yes. with creating complex or compound sentences, <clears throat> simplicity is always better. <laughs> That's right. Writing shorter sentences is also going to get your scores. It is not compulsory that if you write a complex sentence or two complex sentences you'll get better scores That's because right. if you're making grammatical errors in there you will definitely not get the necessary scores right so first thing is always focus on accuracy in spellings second thing is focus also on accuracy in grammar and all these things also include typing because yes. typing mistakes impact both spelling and grammar scores so be very careful for example after a full stop or let's say after a punctuation mark we have to leave a space Right. Now you forget the space, it's a typing error and grammar and spelling both will be affected. Absolutely, so you yes. you need to be a bit careful with that as well. Uh, Gaurang, I think we have one more question from Bilal Sheikh and he's asking that, hi, are there any changes in the assessments in PT as compared to 2016, which means that you might have taken a test in 2016 before this. So what do you think, Gaurang? Are there any changes per se? I would not say there are any changes per se in the assessments. If they have made any changes, they have not really communicated it openly. Right. But yes, there is a change in terms of the questions that they are posing and the mix of questions that you will be getting. So they are changing the, the sequence of questions. They are changing the complexity of the level, questions. That's right, the level. The level yes. Some of the questions are becoming harder. The audios are faster, faster. longer. Yes. The kind of words that have been used are getting complex, complex that's right. and the accents are also changing. That's right. So these are the changes that have really come and that have been noted in terms of scoring or in terms of assessment. I would say now even more students are getting 90 than the number that we were Before. having in 2016. That's right. There are so many test takers who are taking the diseases. That's also one of the reasons. And also, yes, many people tell that, you know, listening is a bit trickier, a bit tricky to crack diseases. But as you correctly said, Gaurang, the thing we need to understand is that listening is the last module in yes. PT. And I've had this firm belief since a very long time now that PT is not mainly focused on your high level of English. 
But since it is the last module, generally the mind is tired. Yes. And if you're not focused, if you're not alert enough, even in a split second, your score can you know shift down to 92, 82, or 80, or 77. You don't know. Just one mistake, yes. you write one sentence incorrectly or miss one question, and you can yes. fall down by two or three marks. Easily, easily, yes. And because most of the questions, I think except for select missing words, all the other questions are integrated in yes, some or the other way. It has five tasks are integrated tasks. Three are integrated with writing, two with reading. So, lot of at stake yes. over here. Yes. So then, in that case, if you miss even one important task, you are automatically going to have an effect on another module. That's true. That's which true. will affect your overall scores. Yes, so as Gaurang correctly said, friends, just focus on the integrated task even more. I'm not saying don't focus on the remaining task, but integrated task means integrated, obviously. Writing with reading. So you need to be really careful. Yes. Well, Rajan Khan has asked, but well, thank you for your question, Rajan, first. Which section like reading, listening, speaking and writing is most important for overall score? <coughs> that, that is possibly the most important question <laughs> for the PTE exam that you have asked Rajan. We cannot say that any one section is the most important. However, with speaking and listening, mm. having the maximum number of integrated questions their overall weightage is right. higher That's than right. reading or writing sections. That's right. Yeah. Also, yes, also, because listening has got eight different Class. question types. Yes. That's right. And five of them are integrated. In terms of weightage, I would say listening takes precedence over the other three sections. That's right. But even speaking has many tasks of listening. Yes. <laughs> so everything is integrated. But as he correctly said, speaking and listening, total if you count, there are eight plus 5, 13 tasks out of 20. So, yes. yes, and out of even in speaking out of 5, 3 are integrated with listening. So 11 tasks deal with listening. 11 out of 20. So obviously... Obviously listening has a very high value. Points wise, yes. And because as I said, and as Malcolm correctly said, speaking also has listening. Mm -hmm. So you would never be sure whether you got less marks because you made mistakes in the listening section or you made mistakes in the speaking, speaking section. Speaking, that's right. So you need to be very careful in all the integrated tasks. More or less that is the gist of what we are trying to say. So pay more attention to speaking and listening, listening both. but don't ignore yeah. reading or writing <laughs> also. That's right. All right. Even Bindal Patel has a question. Hi Bindal, thanks for joining in. Now Bindal asks that how many <coughs> sentences we need to write in this task of summarize spoken text. So coming back to our main task which is summarize spoken text. I think we should write around, as we already know now, 50 to 70 words, not a single sentence, roughly around three to four or five sentences maximum. Yes. Not I think more really if right, you yes. average about 10 words per sentence, 10 to 12 words, then writing five sentences more than enough, should yes. be more enough. Than enough yes. right? If you're writing a more complex, complex or sentence. compound sentence in between, say yes. one sentence is complex or compound, so it will go to 20 or 25 words. Right. Then reduce one sentence. That's right. The target has to be writing between 50 and 70, 70 words. words. Yes. So three to five sentences is ideal. Minimum three, maximum five generally. Okay. Malcolm, let us talk about the scoring pattern over here. Yes. How is the scoring given? What are the most important areas in everything? Right. Mm. So since this is an integrated task, firstly, we need to focus on the four parameters of writing. First and the most important being spelling. Second being grammar. Mm -hmm. Third being vocabulary and the fourth being written discourse. So out of these four as well, the most important is generally I think spelling and grammar because as we have said, you cannot afford to make mistakes in spelling and grammar because the software is very finicky when it comes to spelling and grammar. And along with that also need to be very careful about typing. So these five things mainly, spelling, grammar, typing, vocabulary, written discourse, take care of the writing part. Right. And listening part mainly deals with content. Right. So the more relevant content you have, the more it will push up your score. Exactly. So how, how should it be attempted? Sorry, uh, I think Bilal has asked a question. Oh, sorry, it's, it's a continuation. It's, right. it's uh, Shweta who has asked a question. Is it? Thank you for the question, Shweta, first of all. Is it easy to score 50 plus in each? Oh yes, definitely 50 plus is easy, provided you understand the scoring. Because even 50, which is a band, six equivalent score in IELTS can sometimes be difficult to achieve if you're not aware of how you should perform in the task. Exactly. So mainly awareness of your, you know, the way in which it should be done is very critical in this. Also, at a basic level, your grammar has to be correct in there. Right. You do not need really high quality grammar or really high quality vocabulary That's right. in order to score 50 plus. However, 
you cannot write totally broken sentences right. or speak In totally yes, incorrect right. sentences that's right that would not make it hard to get 50 plus right and as we were saying there are few tasks in speaking listening and reading you know if you mess up those main tasks even i think you know 50 can sometimes be a bit difficult to achieve yes yes we have had a lot of cases where students have come to us because they have fallen just short of 50 45 48 49, 49 yeah, you know, even that would be a small small mistake mm. they might have missed one write from dictation Could or be. one fill in the blank something or like something that. any integrated task and they fell short that's right so yes now go on coming back to our task of summarize spoken text um so roughly for content what do you think should be our main focus in the audio well see because this is a summary and different people will understand mm. the things that are being spoken differently mm. what might be your understanding and the the perspective or meaning that you derive from it right. is going to be different from the perspective or meaning that i derive so there can be n number of permutations That's and right. uh, you know calculations in terms of writing the summary however what is extremely important is that you try to understand the overall meaning that is being conveyed right and take note of if not more than at least 5 to 7 points ideally 10 points key phrases that were spoken right right that are highlighting points that are related and right. of course very important the subject subject the key subject that is being discussed you should try and note these down while the audio is playing right because sometimes it's also been seen that if you know if somebody takes a lot of points he or she then might get confused like what yes. to include what to omit yes so try and get at least 5 to 7 points so if you have to write five sentences let us say then just for ease of understanding you should have one or maximum two points per sentence right right and then you are just putting them together into a proper relevant and cohesive Coherent summary form. that's right cohesive and coherent form <coughs> right so garan i think now we can take an example yes of a question which comes we believe many times in the real exam as well yes and the same task is also similar to actually retail lecture in speaking absolutely yes so the questions can come here and there as well <coughs> actually if you look at it there are two tasks in both of them speaking and listening that are quite similar to similar each other similar tasks yes in speaking we have got the second task which repeat is the repeat sentence. sentence right right and it is the last task in listening <laughs> which is write, write from, from dictation. dictation same thing yes you speak and you write you speak and you write it's the same thing you have to repeat the sentence word for word exactly, exactly. as it is spoken right. so even this task is called summarize spoken text and in speaking the same task comes at retail lecture is a fourth task in speaking i'm sorry where you get roughly 3 to 4 or 5 questions yes but there you speak for roughly 40 seconds here you write you have to write but if you if you compare in 40 seconds you will be speaking somewhere around 60 70 words oh yes easily so, so it's it's more or less the same thing yes if you are able to get retail lecture correctly mm. that flow and if you can bring that flow your to your writing yes, right. you can definitely get very good marks true well before we play i think rishabh has asked us another question rishabh is it uh, we will be coming to your question soon as we have taken the example yes. right and then we will be giving you an answer as to what exactly your question is right so let us first look at the example or rather listen to the example task in sorry. speaking i'm sorry So I think now we should start with the yes. example. Yes. Uh, I don't know why that was taught in medical school, but it was considered to be a fat soluble vitamin and therefore stored in the body and it would act for a long period of time and it would build up and you get into trouble but now in recent years when we've had the technology to measure fat content of vitamin D we find there's not much there and the reason there's not much there is there's not much coming into the diet or we are avoiding sun so uh, we have less vitamin D and therefore our fat tissue does too uh, it's not stored up there in high concentrations you don't begin to store vitamin D in fat 
until you begin to build it up in the serum. And that doesn't occur until you already have relatively high 25 hydroxy D values. Now, it's at this point you begin to accumulate fat. If you were out here, you'd probably have a very healthy fat concentration of D, but not very many people are out there. These are studies that were done in under controlled circumstances where we can, couldn't control how much was coming in and what the concentrations were under the circumstances. But uh, uh, the one thing students seem to recall is that fat-soluble vitamins can produce intoxication, therefore you have to be careful. Mm -hmm. All right, Gorang. So that was just over a minute. That's right. right just about a minute and 15 seconds or 75 second long audio. Right. This is one of the most repeated Questions summarized yes. text questions in the PTE exam and also comes in, the, in retail lecture many yes, times. Yes, it comes also comes in retail lecture many times. Yes. So how Malcolm should we go about writing a summary for this? What are the key points that you have noted? Right. So friends, as you saw me while the audio was playing, you and I was taking a few key points. I don't know, I'll just try to bring it a bit closer to your screen as well. Daksh, if you can just hold it. So, as you saw, I have noted down a few points, mainly including that they are fat-soluble vitamins. They have roughly like, their content in the fat depends on first of their collection. And I also written that it should be stored in the serum first and then it's converted to the fat actually. And also I've written two very important points that sometimes the content goes down mm -hmm. because of a less diet or vitamin D uh, relevant yeah. food items. Not getting enough sun. That or is not getting enough sun. Two very important diet and sun. Right. And also I did try to note down a level which was spoken something about 25 hydroxy some units but obviously right. I could not note down the unit. I did not understand it. That's why. And also lastly it ended like according to a lecture that study under controlled circumstances something which is very important is that a higher level of vitamin D can lead to intoxication, intoxication. Yes. and that's why we need to be a bit careful. That was the conclusion. That was sort of the conclusion, that's right. Right. Yes, so thank you, these are the key points that Malcolm has noted down, the, you can say key phrases, right. most important aspects. Now putting all of these together into a coherent summary is what is important. It right. should be a continuous flow from the first sentence to the last one. Right. Right. And that is how it would work. So we will be putting up a summary on this once we are done with the video. We cannot put it up. Of course, we cannot put it up while we are live. Right. So we will be writing that and we will be putting it up right. so you can check it out. And remember, this is one of the most important questions because it is repeated quite often. So please take note of the summary. It can help you out because you might just get the question in the exam. That's right. And as we pointed out, even if you saw what I noted, there are roughly around 7 to 10 points. Which yes. I tried to note down the main phrases. Now, sometimes the problem is if you just note down words, you know, sometimes the audio is very lengthy. You might not understand how those words correlate. Yes. And sometimes if you note a lot of things, again, it might be a bit messy. So that's why what we are trying to say is try to note down in phrases. Like I wrote diet, sun, and then I put a cross over it. So what I was trying to write is that people don't get enough diet, people don't get enough sunlight, and those are two main reasons the word was used, two important points. Yes. So very important. Of course, as you said, we need to be careful of the conclusion part. Introduction, conclusion, because at the end of the day, we are writing a summary, and a summary should include the introduction and the conclusion with the part of the body as well. Absolutely, yes. Now, to get back to... Uh, the question that was asked sorry. sorry we have got quite a few questions let us just take a look at them right. yes. mm -hmm. we cannot see all the questions we are trying to get there okay uh, there was a question that was asked by Rishabh as Rishabh, to yes. what are what the, are the mistakes that we are allowed Mm. and still get a score 79. of 79 plus. I hope I got the question yes, right because I cannot see yes, it on the screen right, right now. That's but right. that was the crux of the question. Well, Malcolm, what would you say to that? Mainly content here and there sometimes you can still cross 79, but if writing mistakes happen, it becomes really difficult. Like main things you already stress, spelling, grammar, you can't afford to mess up those things. Yes. 
Malcolm is perfect in saying that you cannot afford to mess with the writing. That's right. Remember, there's the content because as I started by saying that different people would understand it differently. Even BT knows that. Even BT <laughs> knows that. So if you've got the key phrases in there right. and your overall meaning is being conveyed, right. you can still get good marks for listening. Right. However, if you have made too many grammatical errors, if your spellings are incorrect, if your punctuation marks are not there, you will definitely not score 79 plus. Right. So in terms of the allowances that you have, you can take a little bit of liberty yes. with the content, but absolutely zero liberty with the grammar and the vocabulary and uh, the punctuation marks, spellings, all of that. Right. So we hope you answered your question there, Rishabh. And Bilal, we got your question. You've written that any changes in the marking criteria as if you achieved 7 in PT in 2016. So for achieving 8, as we have already repeated a couple of times, you need to be really careful with the writing part. You can't afford mistakes in the writing part in this task, particularly we are talking about. Yes. And uh, there are no changes in the marking criteria. Definitely no. The changes, as we said earlier, are in the types of questions that you are getting. They are slightly more complex, maybe lengthier, mm. and the composition of the questions has changed. Right. But the answering methods and the assessment methods are very much the same. So you can definitely score eight if you practice, understand the scoring pattern, understand the answer patterns, and attempt it with a clear mind. Yes, yeah, so take that as a very open mindset, like expect it to be a bit difficult, you know. If you expect that everything is going to be easy and then things become difficult, it's a problem, obviously. When you expect the worst, everything is easy, generally. Right. Mandeep Singh Minhas. Thank you, Mandeep, for your question. Mandeep has asked, how much idioms help in writing to achieve a good score? Malcolm, what's your take? Idioms do help in writing, definitely. But in the summary task, idioms, if at all, should be academic, first thing. Idiomatic expressions, they're also called. So idiomatic expressions will definitely help in writing. And it's not an expression, but just to give an instance, like if you use the phrase, you know, not only blah, 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 comma, but also blah, blah, blah. So when you use something like this, it becomes a slightly compound or complex automatically. Yes. And the grammar score goes up, which effectively pulls up the writing score as well. Yes. So using those kind of expressions will definitely help using words like furthermore, furthermore moreover, academic words. however, yes. these are the words that would help you out, That's that right. will boost your marks. However, using idiomatic expressions that would not really go with the subject would actually hurt your scores. That's right. right. So try and understand that. If there were any such idioms or expressions used in the audio and if you have been able to note them down, right, definitely. then definitely feel free to use them. Right. They will help improve your overall content. So mainly it's a balance between academic vocabulary, relevant yes. and also between the content. Absolutely. You need yes. to balance them. It both. has to be a balance. Right. Mamun has again asked, do these audio repeat? Yes, they do repeat. Right? This is one of the most frequently repeated audios. There are quite a few like that, which are repeated again and again. Right. You can find tons of information on this. If you check online, you'll also find quite a few of those on ptetutorials.com. That's right. And almost all the questions that we take for our live sessions, these are almost always repeated ones. That's right. And Mandeep, I see that you also put in an angry icon over there, angry smiley. So if possible, just make it a happy smiley. It will definitely help us as well. Yes, you might be angry because we got a bit delayed with your question. We answered your question later and somebody else's question came first. That was not really in our hands because we are following what is there on the screen in front of us. So we might just miss a question. We are really sorry about that. Um, Gaurang, I think we have covered all the questions and yes. all the doubts are covered. And as we said, we'll be posting a summary soon as well. Yes. Malcolm, just one question that I had to ask, which a lot of students ask. Definitely. What should they do if they miss mm -hmm. the audio, as in if it's an obscure topic or they have not really been able to take notes? And what is the importance of having a working pen? <laughs> oh, very good question, Goran. Now, first thing is that, yes, the pen stops working a couple of times. And let's say, for example, the center is Clifton's. They provide just one pen. Yes. So at that time, if the pen stops, you can't do anything about it. Honestly speaking, you can just, you know, raise your hand, but the software is not going to wait for you. 
Correct. So basically, you need that retention and you need real, main thing is presence of mind. You need to be really cool about it. Try to retain the information you can. And yes, one more thing is that in summarized spoken text, you have that box in front of you where you can type it. So if the pen stops working, just start typing yes. the content. Also, remember this. We have this pen over here. Okay. Make sure during reading, you're not going to need the pen. Yes. During writing, you're not going to need the pen. So after speaking, make sure you turn the pen off. Don't yes. leave it open. Just close the lid. Yeah. Just close the lid. If it's got a lid, close the lid so that the ink does not dry off. That's right. Another important thing. Just before listening section starts, you've got the reading section finishing okay. and then there's a break available. A 10-minute right. optional break. Use that break. Maybe take a break of 5 minutes. Maybe take a full break of 10 minutes. But just before you start, restart, make sure Check you are it. checking the pen. Yes. Scribble a little bit on that. Put in some rough notes, yes. whatever. If the pen is not working, make sure you get it replaced before you start, start the listening yes. section. Many times people complain that my pen not working, but after that you can't do anything about it. You cannot do anything about it. Then it's all about your memory. Yes, that's so right. So make sure that you have to do this correctly. That's right. And yes, even if you are off topic sometimes, as you correctly asked, we might, sometimes it may be a bit difficult and you might not know what to include. So basically it's always advisable that you have you know, sort of a structure in your mind. It always yes. helps in the summaries, in the essays, sometimes it helps because sometimes, you know, you do get things that you don't expect randomly and it always helps. So if you if you missed the main crux, content, yes. the crux, right, but you still have got four or five or three or four key points, right. then try and ensure that you got 100% accurate grammar. That's right. Okay. Write, maybe follow a Thanks structure, randomly. a template kind of a thing. Helps. So if you, if you missed right. the... And then you can hope that you will score better on the writing side. You might miss a few marks on the listening side, but otherwise it should be fine. Right. Okay. Mamun has asked another question here. Oh, what are the grammars we should focus on most? Yes, Mamun, we will be coming to that question that thank you again for the question. In terms of grammar, what should you, there are no different types of grammars. Okay. But what you should be focusing on is trying to follow the same tenses that were used in the audio. Mm, very okay. important, yes. So if it's in the past tense, try to keep it in the past tense. If it's in the past continuous tense, try and follow past continuous tense. Right. Do not keep on switching tenses. So do not go from past tense to present tense to present continuous back to past something in the future tense. <laughs> that is a sure shot way of ensuring that you do not get your marks. Yes, so just focus, use your common sense, focus on the tenses as he correctly said and focus on your punctuation marks, focus on your capitals as the case is and I think it should be more than enough. Also, as Malcolm earlier mentioned, please ensure that you're getting your punctuation marks correct mm -hmm. and also the spaces that you have to leave after your punctuation every mark. Punctuation mark that's so right. every punctuation mark has to be followed by a space. Right. Malcolm, in terms of the paragraphs, can we make paragraphs on, in this or it should be a single paragraph? No, no, it has. It should be a single paragraph because we are writing one summary. We are not writing an essay. Essay should have a paragraph. In here, there is no need. Okay. We have got two questions from Bhavani Bharti Giri. Thank you for your question. How many words should we write? And usually 70 is the limitation, but should we write until it is 70? Well, no, Bhavani, the answer is no. The option is you have to write between 50 and 70 words. That is the instruction. You have to write between 50 and 70 words. So anything more than 50 and anything less than 70 is fine. You can go 100% up to 70, but do not go beyond 70. Yes. So he can write up to 70 words. There is no problem with writing up to 70 yes. words. Yes. Writing up to 70 words is fine, but it is not compulsory that you have to write up to 70. Yes. If you are done with 51 words, it's fine. Just go back, check your answer, make sure there are no grammatical mistakes, there are no spelling mistakes, you have not used any incorrect words in there and get done with it. Yes, so no point just writing for the sake of writing, but also you need to be careful of the content. The answer to your question is focus on the content. If content is going down, it is going to go down for sure. Yeah. Malcolm, another question that has been asked a lot of times is, we have 10 minutes for this task. Yes. So should I use the full 10 minutes or should I leave early so that I can save some time for the other questions in the listening task? No, thank you for asking around this question. I forgot to talk about this point. Now, the thing is that we get minimum two questions in summarized spoken text, maximum three. Per question, the available timer is 10 minutes. Now this, since it is an independent timer, it doesn't impact the remaining time in listening. 
which means that let's say for example I finish in five minutes which means I have still five more minutes left now if I do next after those five minutes I do not get the remaining five minutes later because there is no cumulative addition of time in PTE so each question is a complete timer of in 10 itself, minutes yes. in itself yes. so as you click next those 10 minutes are Adon. over they are over they will not be added so never do there's no point of doing next in this task I would say yes you. there is no point of doing next in this task rather use the full time yes. to ensure that you got a hundred percent grammatically right. correct spelling wise correct and content wise correct that's accurate right. that's right that's right just focus on the accuracy yes we have got another question from Rajan Malcolm can you read that yes. out please Rajan is asking how long will be right from dictation sentence is that the same like speakings one or bit longer okay Rajan interesting question you already answered this earlier but we will still uh, come back to it and answer it for you the tasks are interchangeable so the, the the questions that you will face are interchangeable questions or sentences that you will get in repeat sentence might also come for right from dictation and vice versa the length of the questions depends Recently, there have been some long questions coming in 14, 15, maybe 16 words, mm. but most of the questions are going to be seven or eight words. That's right. So be prepared mentally, roughly seven to 14 words. Keep a wide, you know, expectation range. It will make things easy for you. Yes, that is how it should be kept in mind. Go with an open mind. Don't go with any preset notions. That's right. Also, Bindal Patel is asking that should we need to follow any fixed structure for a better score so Bindal again see structure as we said it might help you if you're lacking in content first preference should be content but then let's say I don't have enough words to start with so I can write something like the speaker is talking about or something like let's say this lecture sheds light on right so at least grammatically 100% right it's a good structure to start an introduction with and you get a good score for writing eventually yes so if you have to be sure about this if you are not very confident with your grammar if right. you are making mistakes while writing in terms of spellings in terms of the the punctuation marks or the the grammatical structure of the sentence try and follow a structure right right because the structure has been predefined and the grammar in there is accurate you can get better scores yes for but writing is, part, at least for the writing yes, yes but it is not compulsory not compulsory it it depends on person to person different people different levels and so different requirements right Rick Blaine has asked thank you for the question Rick let us check what it is I am planning to take your professional year but do I have to take PTE I took my IELTS in August 2015 and studied in an English university well uh, Rick we are not sure as to how long you studied in an English university have you been studying there from 2015? Have you completed two years? Have you completed five years of English study? Because from what we understand, again, a, the correct answer to this can only be provided by a registered yes. Mara agent, not by us. But if you have studied for a continuous period of five years in the English teaching university, then you might be eligible to get exemption from IELTS or PTE. However, this exemption will also reduce the overall points that you are getting in terms of the requirements for being eligible to apply for a PR visa. Right. Right. So this is the best that we can answer your question right now. The best, the correct person to answer this question would be a registered Mara agent. All right. So Gaurang, I think we are done with all the questions. Really, we had a lot of questions and I yes. hope we have answered them to the best of our knowledge. Just in case we have missed anybody's question, we will be going over all the questions once we are done with this live session, when we are going to be going online again to post the summary. So if there are any questions that we have left out, please excuse us for it. And we will be giving you an answer on a personal basis. Oh, Bhavani is back again. Usually it is suggested that we have to use lecturer mentioned. Is there any format that we can use to match the exact words in the software? Now Bhavani, as you already said before, it's a thing of perception. So to match the, it's not that the software will be having just one sample response because millions of people have been taking PT since the time that started. So obviously there are so many responses and thousands of people also get 90, which means there is no single sample response answer. 
the correct words if you choose from the audio they'll obviously push up your content score and that is what you need to mainly focus on but again we are saying there's no compulsory structure which you have to or must follow so even if you don't say the lecturer mentioned and you straight away write about the subject that was the topic of the audio without even once saying the lecture mentioned or the speaker said you will still get good marks very good marks even perfect 90 if you have made no grammatical errors if your content is on target and if there are no spelling errors all right we have one more question for bindal it's asking that can we repeat the same structure for retail lecture and summarize spoken text so yeah, you can what is the you problem can because that? one is written the other one is spoken, spoken. there is no connection no, yeah. between the two directly yes. and because it's a computer checking it's not going to check whether you gave the same answer in two places no you can use the same structure but remember this that writing 50 to 70 words is okay but speaking for 40 seconds is going to require slightly longer responses so yes. it might be 80 it might be 90 words depending on your speed of speaking different thing altogether altogether different so you can follow the same structure as long as you are sure that the structure is grammatically accurate Correct. that's right so i think Gaurang, with this we will end the task at yes. today and also friends i'd like to remind you again that the coming saturday that is the 17th of march the day after tomorrow we have our pt master class at our melbourne cbd premises the class will start at 11 a.m in the morning and go until 5 30 in the evening to register for that you just need to go to ptetutorials.com under coaching, you'll see the PTE Melbourne Master Class. You just need to click there and you can register in just 10 seconds flat. So don't miss that class. It's this Saturday, the 17th of March. Hundreds of students have attended just one class and got the required score of 79 each. So if you have your test in the coming week, kindly make sure you attend the class because we do not have any other master class lined up in the month of March after this. The next master class will be in April. So this is your last chance if you have your test lined up in March. Do attend it for sure. Students, you cannot afford to miss a masterclass with Malcolm. Right? Thank you, Laura. There are just no other options available to you if you got a very short time to prepare. No crash course is going to prepare you for the PTE exam as a masterclass with Malcolm can. So make sure you take this opportunity and this being the only masterclass now in the month of March, make sure that you come and attend it and then go and give your exam. It will be 100% helpful to you to get your desired scores. Definitely friends and I'd also like to share with you that from this month onward, if you enroll for, with our coaching, you'll also get one free masterclass. There are two packages right now. The shortest one is a two weeks, that is a 10 session course that is available for $599. Now another one is called the unlimited package which is available for $999. Now with the two weeks course, you get two scored practice tests free along with 10 unscored tests. So that is a total of 12 tests, 12 tests. That is a lot of tests for practice. And with the unlimited package, you get a total of 25 practice tests out of which three are scored, which means you get a scorecard just like the real exam. And along with that, you also get one masterclass free, which is a revision class as well. Yes, and the masterclass in itself adds a lot of value. That's right. So if you are going to be thinking about coaching and if you got the time on hand please make sure that you come and register and take maximum benefit of all the offerings that we have for you definitely whether you're enrolled at clayton or at melbourne cbd you will be availing that offer and friends also there's one good news due to your constant reminders and suggestions very soon aussie's group is going to start pt coaching also in sydney that is in Parramatta. so we have heard your questions we have heard your suggestions and very soon I believe in the month of April, we are going to start our PT coaching in Parramatta, Sydney soon. So if you want to know anything regarding it, just head to our Aussie's office at in, I'm sorry, in Sydney, Parramatta or in Melbourne, uh, in Sydney CBD, I'm sorry. At both the places, you'll be assisted for that. Well, Bithil, we have already mentioned what will be included. So in the masterclass, you will get a full crash course for the entire PT exam and if you are registering for the coaching sessions then you will be getting coaching for whatever period you are registering for plus scored and unscored practice tests and the master class. Yes. So it's a complete package if you are registering with us and you also have the standalone master class that you can take or you can purchase practice 
packages online on ptetutorials.com. So everything is there, all the options are open, depends on what you require and we'll be happy to help you with that. And we'd also like to remind you friends that since the month of January 2018, that is since this financial year, not the financial, but since the year has started, Aussies Group has had the maximum scores of 90 each. 13 of our students from the month of January, February and March included have had a score of 90 each. 90 each is a score of 90, 90, 90, 90. You're more than welcome to visit our office as well. We have got all their scores lined up in our office as well. There is no institute in the world which I believe has 13 scores of 90 each. So friends, what are you waiting for? 90 each is the target you're looking for. Don't look for 79. If your target is high, you'll still fall on 79 for sure. Yes. Well, Malcolm, that is just about everything that we have to cover. We have had a fantastic session today. So many questions, interesting questions, really pointed questions. That's right. Thank you all for your love, for your support and for asking the questions. We are really, really helpful. Uh, happy to help you out. Malcolm, what will be the question for next week? Next week, we are going to go to the second task of listening, which generally is multiple choice, choose multiple answer questions. Hmm bit lengthy audios over there as well yes and again partial negative scoring just like reading you get plus one for the right response minus one for the incorrect response and but nonetheless important <laughs> an important task as well so we will be having a discussion on this on the coming thursday That's please right. make sure you tune in on time and in the meantime make sure you're attending the master class and following us on facebook twitter instagram and other places we will be back in touch with you soon 